Who would be, like, you have, you had MJ, who would be that mentee for you? You know, Kyrie, certainly. I mean, I, you know, I remember sitting on the couch at home after Cleveland came back from that 3-1 deficit and beat Golden State. It's over. It's over. Cleveland is a city of champions once again. The Cavaliers are NBA champions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're watching the game, and, you know, we're sitting on the couch, and, you know, me and John are there just kind of hanging out. And then my phone rings. I'll tell you about that phone call Hello. during 2016 when I called him. It's FaceTime call, and I'm like, I hate FaceTime calls. Like, I don't <laughs> FaceTime call me, you know, unless it's my family, right? Yeah, I was a little tipsy after I had a few yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> champagne, <laughs> champagne, you know, champagne shots going, going into it. But it's Kyrie. Never FaceTime before that. Never FaceTime. Yeah, real old head. Like, all right, let me pick it up. I pick it up, and Kyrie's in the, in the, in the locker room celebrating on FaceTime. Like, yo, what's up? I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. I'm like, yo, dude, it worked. <laughs> Your advice worked. Your advice worked, bro. <laughs> Your advice worked. You told me not to give a fuck about what nobody said. Yeah. You told me, yo, don't pay attention to anybody that's not giving you positive energy, man, and it worked. Your advice worked, bro. Damn, we really did it. You know what I mean? Like, he's completely freaking out. He was sitting next to Gigi. He's like, hey, Gigi. And Gigi's like, hey, congratulations. And it, it was like, it was just like, fam it was just family right, time, you right, know? Yeah. He's like, oh my God, and like champagne spilling all over the place. I felt like I, I, I helped him cement his legacy by having somebody be successful at the highest level, actually listening, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, I, some people wanna, wanna uh, be the best at what they do, but they're not as curious to go up to you or you or you and ask you straight up questions. What, is, what, did, what did you do day to day? So I was really, really proud of him, but so I'd say Kyrie's probably the one I'm closest to. He knew that I was going to be competitive, but I was just ultra, ultra, ultra curious and humble to sit with him to be able to ask him pressing questions about mentally, spiritually, physically, how did you get to be who you are? Sure, we all love to see how he dances with the ball and shakes past the fenders. But what we fail to see while he's shaking and baking is the inner fear defenders have of him simply raising up and knocking it down. Knocking it down off the dribble, off the catch, off the screen, or simply sizing up a defender from a triple threat position and knocking it down. Shooting is Kyrie's primary threat. Now, from these basic necessities come the spins, the stopping goals, the crosses, the double crosses, the behind the backs, and all other moves that entertain fans and embarrass opponents. Yes, the shaking and baking. Kyrie understands that simple is more important than sizzle. Process is more important than performance. Crafting is more important than creating. He understands that doing extraordinary things come from doing the ordinary things over and over and over and over again. Do you? Steve Nash was asked recently, comparing Kyrie to you. Mm -hmm. Kyrie's one of my favorite players of all time. You know, he's brilliant, uh, skill level, historically off the charts. And I think he was saying that Kyrie has a more complete handle package. Right. Is that something you agree with? Hell yeah, he got your best. Kyrie the has the best. He's the best. And, and Kyrie jumper is wet too. Wow. Like Kyrie is like, like guys are in their own cat. like Kyrie is, He's, he's really herky-jerky herky with it. Yeah. He's herky-jerky with it. So you think Kyrie has the best handles ever? Ever. Wow. Ever. ever? Who you think? I'm saying, I'm saying like, like yeah, with, with you me, have, with in me, the words of Shaq, you have me, G14 class. Okay, I heard, I heard Rod Strickland, and I love Rod Strickland too. Um, he said, basically, he just go. Basically. He Any just, direction. He just go. Okay. Like, I was more of a reactionary ball handler. Okay. You know, so I'm going to make a move and then I'm going to react off of the defense. Mm -hmm. You know, Kyrie's playing with you. You know, okay. Sam's playing with you and then making a move. So his, his, his ball handling is different. I think a lot of that is imagination. You got to have a certain imagination. If you listen to him talk, like, that's different. 
it's another little level. Mm -hmm. So Kyrie Irving being your godson, what impresses you the most about his game on the court? Uh, I mean, his imagination. No, I mean, I see a lot of similarities, a right? Lot. The, the biggest difference is Kyrie's trigger. Yeah, like I shoot couldn't like shoot that. like that, uh -huh. you know? And then his ball handling is different, you know? Still the same. I mean, I'm, I'm getting to wherever I need to get, mm -hmm. but this is just a little different. But his skill set, I mean, I don't know if we've ever, you know, I have to go to Isaiah Thomas, but have we ever seen someone that can handle the ball like that? Some stuff that Kyrie do with the basketball, I, I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> you like, it does look like he got it on the screen at times. It, it's a little different. It looked like he <laughs> looked like he looked like he dancing with it or something, right? I looked at all air and I looked at myself as as very unique. Um, I looked at myself as a player, you know, as a Picasso, as a, as an original. As a point guard, dribbling is very important. You must be able to know how to dribble with your right hand equally as well as your left hand. You must be able to go in each direction so you can set up other players on the court. One of the drills that I use a lot is called the figure eight drill. I'll just go through it briefly for you. You want to keep the ball as low as possible and try to get it with your fingertips. And as you get more comfortable with it, you can start looking away from the basketball. Then that way you can see people open. When they make cuts, you can pass it. And everybody will love you because you'll be a good point guard. I do see some guys carving out their originality in their own space. Right. I think Steph Curry has done it. I think Kyrie has done it. Like, like I was a ball handler off of instincts. So I come at you real hard and then I can react. But he's playing with you, the then reacting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's different. Kyrie will have you beat and then bring it back and play with it. Like, he toy with people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he can, he can still just go. You know what I mean? But if, if he feel like playing with you. So where's my boy falling into that white chocolate? He high up there. He high. That's who I would say had the best handles ever. Handle Kyrie Irving's the best. Ever to me. Kyrie. I agree. Love I, don't it. Know. I love it. I agree with Jamal that. Jamal Crawford. But Kai's, Kai's playing with that energy. He's trying to embarrass you every single time. That was when I was 17, 18. I was doing the same thing. But it's I dribble really high, and that's what makes people think they can reach they can and get it. Yeah. He came and stayed with me in Seattle. He was last year in Boston, so probably three or four years ago. And we worked out every day for a month. But I was surprised to, to hear from him. He's the only other person I've seen or talked to who sees the same things what he's looking at when he's dribbling. What I mean by that is this. My feet, my hands, my mind are all one. So if you guys trapped me right now and I had a ball, I would look at a spot. And somehow, some way, I would get to that spot. It didn't matter. I would do three moves over there to make you shift and get the ball. I just know where the spot is safe at. And he's the only other person that I've ever talked to that sees it like that. Like, I think a lot of people at Handle the Rock see it in, like, black and white. I think we see it in color. His car is like a racket dribble. He's low. He's like yeah. this. He's like Barry Sanders moving. Right. You, you, you the original crossover king. So I want to hear who, who are your top, top three or four guys in the league ball handling wise? Did you like, did you think got the killer handles, oh, the best handles in the league man, to you, your favorite right guy? Uh, you know, Kyrie Irving, no question. You know, so you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta have your ankles tight up. You gotta have your knees oiled up. And you gotta be ready to move your body because they gonna have you shifting everywhere. You know, and, and I, I'm gonna tell you this, man. He's getting older, but that motherfucker still play Chris Paul. When I'm watching the game and I see that Kai got 4.6 points in the first half, the other team better be up 30. <laughs> they better be up 40. Because he's coming. Because he, he's definitely going to put his imprint on the game and he picks his spots. And that's why the marriage between him and Luka has been seamless. The way he's playing, not only on the offensive end, but the defensive end. Right? When you look at stars, that's what you want to see. You at least want to see them compete on the defensive end. And you just see his leadership and how the younger guys just follow him. And Kai is so tough. And I think a lot of times people don't realize you can have great players or whatnot. Sometimes that can get you to almost like the 15, 10-yard line. Kai is going to pull you over the goal line. Kyrie Irving, you can't like do anything to make it hard on him. Like, you can't make the game tough for Kyrie. Like, he's one of the best three-point shooters. He's one of, got one of the best mid-rangers, arguably, if not the best. He has, he's arguably the best finisher in the NBA. Um, he has floaters with 
either hand, as you can see by that. Um, he can finish with either hand at the rim. Kyrie can also switch and shoot a mid-range jump shot with his left hand. Like, if you get him in a bad way in the air, he can actually just shoot it with... Like, there, there's actually nothing you can do um, to stop Kyrie from scoring. You, you just try to do all you can to make him take a tough shot, and then you got to live with the results. Yeah. Kyrie's going to get what Kyrie's going to do what Kyrie does. Yeah. You can't stop great guys. You can't yeah. stop great players. So if they miss, but what are we willing to give up? And then you have to just tip your head. I don't, I don't, I have so many words to praise Kyrie that I end up with absolutely none because it's just, it's so, he's the most gifted player the NBA has ever seen. He has the best gifts I've ever seen of any NBA player. I've never seen a guy in my NBA life that feels better at times shooting with his offhand than he does with his, with his primary hand. If Kyrie's off in a game with his right hand, he will literally go exclusively to his left hand. I've never seen nothing like that. There was nothing on the basketball floor that Kyrie couldn't do. If Kyrie gets two rings, he get a ring without Brian. It's time for another conversation. Uh, What's the conversation? What? He top seventy five. He that now. He's gonna be higher. But he's gonna be he's gonna be a top ten PG. Thought he was top five. Shit, yeah, I'm out of pocket. <laughs> it's 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 funny to the point where like he'll pull off uh, like we'll go through a play or something and then it's over with and he'll like grab the ball and like toss up a high touch the ceiling layup with his left hand and it just go in so easily and just like, he just casually just pop, just go sit down. It's just like little stuff like that he'll be doing and it's just like his routines are even impressive, you know, yeah. even when we walking through stuff, you know what I'm saying? So like- Crazy. Man, he, he just, he a savant. I mean, it's, it's like fine wine, you know, it's only getting better and like he mastering all aspects of basketball. He already mastered what he does, but as far as like doing every single thing on the floor, I think he's he we asked him to do so much and he he does it every time and he really is a all around just true basketball player, pure basketball player. He's even dunking this year. Last night against Brooklyn, uh, you threw the ball to Josh Green against the Blitz and he threw it to it was Kyrie a bad Irving. Pass. It was a bad pass. It was a bad pass. I when thought, I saw I it told live, him it was like I was like, oh, that's a. That's a fine pass, but then you see it at the other angle. It was a bad pass. But then Kareem, you know, <laughs> that got Kareem. Your reaction? To did you? Did, what did you think when when that happened? Oof. I almost didn't believe it. <laughs> it was, that was actually insane for Kyrie to do that. I didn't realize he caught it, yeah, it like the wrong way, way and him. then had to pull it back towards the rim. That was insane. It was sick. Boom. When you somebody dunking, it, you know what I'm saying? That don't, they usually good, lay, like you tell Boom. like they on some shit. You know what I'm saying? So Real like tough. he was just doing stuff like that, playing great defense, getting four or five steals in a game. So he like mastering his craft, but how he works on this game, how he influences the young dudes is like, that shit was impressive. Cause nobody talk about that with Kai. Like he took yeah. a lot of dudes under his wing this year. Like everybody, he was working out with, giving them to, you know, just being there for him. And it's just He's a really great guy. Um, you know, obviously basketball player, uh, the way he is. But it's just been amazing. You know, he helps me, he helps everybody in the team. And everybody loves him on the team. So he's just a great guy. But Kyrie is another level of offense and another level of knowledge and another level of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You know? You know, Kyrie walks around with the Kobe spirit. I don't know if you feel that. So he, he Kobe in his mind. Yes. You know, when I'm, when yes. You know what I'm saying? He I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of, you know, if you know what you're looking at, you know what you're looking for, you'll see a lot of being, a lot of being in Kyrie right now. He's calm, he's confident, he's leading. Now we're seeing, you know, a more uh, mature Kyrie. Uh, you got to win it, though. Yep. You know, winning half of it and getting there, uh, winning the Western Conference is a big part of it, but you got to win it. Kyrie yeah. shot. The step back right. Irving and Curry. One on one. Irving puts it up. It's good. Was it the truth in the huddle he told T. Lou, give me the ball, or is that just Urban Lennon? Uh, he told T. Lou to give him the ball. Like, this was early in the fourth. He was frying though, he was frying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he was, was early in the fourth. He said he wanted the ball because we realized Steph 
wasn't trying to match up with Kai. I don't remember the foul situation or what it was, but all we took it as like, oh, you scared of dude? <laughs> you scared of buddy? So we just fed him. And know how it ended. What I, what I say about that 3-1 situation is I've never seen two guys play at that level for three straight, three play, straight games. It's the craziest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Like, Bron and Kyrie were just on. Like, we play well. They just play better. If, if Steph came and guarded me, if they tried to do a triple switch, whatever they tried to do, I say, bro, if I go down here and I set this screen and Steph switch off and try and go on me while I'm in the corner, I'm going to bring my screen up too. And now you got a double screen, but you finna have to guard Kyrie. And once we knew that, uh, at the end of that, like, I mean, if you watch film, you knew Kyrie, he, he going to get to that, that, that right wing and, and he going to punish you. And it was, it was, it was hard to watch and be in that vibe where you couldn't do anything about it. And, uh, you know, we still had an opportunity to win. Me trying to answer Kyrie's three over me was kind of in my head. And didn't, ah, didn't, hundred percent. Didn't, didn't Clay say that was one of the biggest regrets of his career was switching that screen. I think Clay came out and said that was the biggest, yep. one of the biggest regrets of my career was switching knew. that screen. Three That's one. the other biggest regret I have in my basketball career besides getting busted for the weed was switching that pick and roll with Steph, with JR and Kyrie. I still mm -hmm. can't, like, I, I can't bring myself to watch that footage. It's un it's too uncomfortable, you know? <laughs> so you watch yourself, you know, I can't believe I just gave him that switch. That was a big shot. And now Kyrie got one of the greatest shots in NBA history, and I like... Because <clears throat> Clay, in his mind, he like, I know exactly I what he can do. I don't care if it was Clay. Gary Payton, whoever was on that wing was getting cooked on that <laughs> shot, nigga. I don't give a damn who it was. <laughs> For sure. But I'm saying, like, I know that I know that 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 energy that Clay talked yeah. about, where it's yeah. like, I knew good and well. Mm -hmm. I know what this is. I know what's about to happen. And now I gotta watch it on TV. Yeah. Steph's a great defender too, but I'm just like, man, I can't believe I conceded that switch. It still burns. You never get over things like but, that. But, in your but that was the game plan though at the time, right? Yeah, but I'm like. When I look at the footage, I'm like, that was a you pretty weak screen by JR. I could have got through yeah, okay, it. Yeah. I'm like, but, just, but just say you don't, yeah. and both of y'all go, and you get a wide and open three, you know what I'm saying? I know. <laughs> but like, you got to do it. You get a wide it. open pick and pop, and JR, Kyrie with his tough. A contested know? three, mm. you got to take that yeah, one. Yeah, you got to take it. That was, a, that was a dagger. They win on your home floor, uh, but you can always tip your hat to somebody who just outplayed you. And that's what they did for three straight games. And every time I see Kyrie, every time I see Brian, like, there's that respect. I used to tell Kai all the time, I said, bro, I know you want to score. Don't worry about passing me the ball. Don't worry about getting me shots. The shots will find me. Do what you do. And sure, sure enough, he'll go five, six, seven straight. It's so many times I've seen him make, and it's hard to make, not, not say make Brown look small, but like the things that he would do is like, you would think Brown was on the bench. The way he's scoring, the way he's just like going nuts. We played a San Antonio game. He had 55 on Tony Parker. Oh my God. I forgot Brown was on the court, literally. But like this little dude who's 6'1, but like scoring effortlessly. Left hand, right hand, and mid range pull up. Free throws, threes, like. Post up, like you think he like six 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 yeah, seven. Yeah, like, like the way he he'll test you on some yeah. shit. Like, bro, you little. Put you in the post. He do all that. Yeah, shit, right. He'll post you. you up. Like, bro, you six one six yeah. two. What are you doing? It was probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got uh, some shit for it though. Yeah. His bag is crazy. Crazy. He can shake and bake Jalen, score from the outside, take it to the basket, score inside with either hand, and the young man is becoming a superstar in this league. Watch out for this young man. A top five point guard right now. And the thing I really appreciate him about him, his stoic demeanor. He continues to compete. He's going to be a great one.